Hi friends. So we had been reading Ramona the Pest, and if you remember correctly, uh, Ramona had been sent home from school for pulling Susan's hair, and she had left her newly fallen out tooth in her teacher, Miss Binney's desk. So I'm going to try to finish this story today. I think it's going to take me two videos because there's a limit on how long I can make the videos. So we're going to start with chapter 8, page 167, Kindergarten Dropout. Why, Ramona, whatever is the matter? Mrs. Quimby wanted to know when Ramona opened the back door. Oh, nothing. Ramona had no trouble hiding a gap in her teeth. She didn't feel like smiling, and not having a tooth to leave for the tooth fairy was only a small part of her trouble. Mrs. Quimby laid her hand on Ramona's forehead. Are you feeling all right, dear? she asked. Yes, I feel all right, answered Ramona, meaning she didn't have a broken leg, a skinned knee, or a sore throat. Then something must be wrong, insisted her mother. I can tell by your face. <sighs> Ramona sighed. Miss Finney doesn't like me anymore, she confessed. Of course Miss Binney likes you, said Mrs. Quimby. She may not like some of the things you do, but she likes you. No, she doesn't, contradicted Ramona. She doesn't want me there anymore. Ramona felt sad, thinking about the recesses and the new seat work she was going to miss. Why, what do you mean? Mrs. Quimby was puzzled. Of course Miss Binney wants you there. No, she doesn't, insisted Ramona. She told me not to come back. But why? She doesn't like me, was Ramona's answer. Mrs. Quimby was exasperated. Then something must have happened. There's only one thing to do, and that is to go to school and find out. Eat your lunch, and we'll go to school before afternoon kindergarten starts and see what this is all about. After Ramona had picked at her sandwich a while, Mrs. Quimby said briskly, Put on your sweater, Ramona, and come along. No, said Ramona. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are, young lady, said her mother, and took her daughter by her hand. Ramona knew she had no choice when her mother started calling her young lady. She dragged her feet as much as she could on the way to school, where the afternoon kindergarten was behaving like the morning kindergarten. Half was lined up by the door waiting for Miss Binney, while the other half raced around the playground. Ramona stared at the ground because she didn't want anyone to see her. And when Miss Binney arrived, Mrs. Quimby asked if they could talk for a moment. Ramona did not look up. Her mother led her to the bench beside the kindergarten door. <clears throat> you sit here and don't budge while I have a little talk with Miss Binney, she told Ramona. Ramona sat on the bench, swinging her feet, thinking about her tooth in Miss Binney's drawer and wondering what her teacher and her mother were saying about her. Finally, she could stand the suspense no longer. She had to budge, so she slipped over to the door as close as she could, without being seen, and listened. The afternoon kindergarten and the workmen across the street were making so much noise she could only catch a few phrases such as bright and imaginative, ability to get along with her peer group, and negative desire for attention. Ramona felt awed and frightened to be discussed in such strange big words, which must mean Miss Binney thought she was very bad indeed. So she scuttled back to the bench when at last she heard her mother walk to the door. What did she say? Ramona's curiosity was almost more than she could bear. Miss Quimby looked stern. She said she'd be glad to have you back, when you are ready to come back. Then I'm not going back, announced Ramona. She'd never go to kindergarten at all if the teacher did not like her. Never. 
Oh, yes, you are, said Mrs. Quimby, tiredly, but Rumpelina knew better. Thus began a difficult time in the Quimby house. But Ramona, you have to go to kindergarten, protested her sister Beezus when she came from home from school that day. Everybody goes to kindergarten. I don't. I used to, but I don't now. When Mr. Quimby came home from work, Mrs. Quimby took him aside and talked quietly to him. Ramona was not fooled for a minute. She knew exactly what those whispers were about. Well, Ramona, suppose you tell me all about what, what went on at school today, said Mr. Quimby, with that false cheerfulness grown-ups use when they're trying to persuade children to self tell something they don't want to tell. Ramona, who really wanted to run to her dad and show him where her tooth used to be, thought a while before she said, mm, We guessed what Miss Finney had in a paper bag that began with a T, and Davy guessed tatter pillars. And what else happened? asked Mr. Quimby, all set to be patient. Ramona could not tell her dad about her tooth, and she was not going to tell about pulling Susan's boing-boing curls. Nothing much was left to talk about. We learned tea, she said at last. Mr. Quimby gave his daughter a long look, but said nothing. After dinner, Beezus talked to Mary Jane on the telephone, and Ramona heard her say, Guess what? Ramona is a kindergarten dropout. She seemed to think this remark was very funny because she giggled into the telephone. Ramona was not amused. Later, Beezus settled down to read a book while Ramona got out her crayons and some paper. Beezus, you don't have a very good light for reading, said Mrs. Quimby. And she added, as she always did, you only have one pair of eyes, you know. Here was an opportunity for Ramona to show off her new kindergarten knowledge. Why don't you turn on the donzer? she asked, proud of her new word. Beezus looked up from her book. What are you talking about? she asked Ramona. What's a donzer? Ramona was scornful. Philly! Everybody knows what a donzer is. I don't, said her dad, who'd been reading the newspaper. What's a donzer? A lamp, said Ramona. It gives a lee light. We think about it every morning in kindergarten. A puzzled silence fell over the room until Beezus suddenly shouted with laughter. She, she, she me. She means the Star Spangled Banner. Her laughter dwindled to giggles. She means the dawn's early light. The dawn's early becomes dawnser. She pronounced each word with exaggerated distinction and then <laughs> began to laugh again. Ramona looked at her mother and father who had straight mouths and laughing eyes of grown-ups who were trying not to laugh out loud. Beezus was right, and she was wrong. She was nothing but a little girl who, got, who used to go to kindergarten and who got everything wrong and made everyone laugh. She was a silly little sister, a foolish, silly little sister who did nothing right. And here is... A sad Ramona and Beezus who figured out what she meant by Donzer. Suddenly, everything that had happened that day was too much for Ramona. She glared at her sister, made a big crisscross motion in the air with her hand, and shouted, Cloth out, Beezus! Then she threw her crayons on the floor stamped her feet and burst into tears and ran into her room that she shared with her sister. Ramona Quimby, her father said sternly, and Ramona knew she was about to be ordered back to pick up her crayons. Well, her dad could order all he wanted. She was not going to pick up her crayons. Nobody could make her pick up her crayons. Nobody. Not her dad, not her mom, not even the principal, not even God. And that's not where I'm going to stop 
for today. And I think